Kevin Bo Miller, and I'm the Reading Veteran Services Officer. I welcome everyone here on this beautiful Saturday morning. Thank you so much for taking time out to help honor and celebrate with these brave Americans and families. They answered the call of duty almost 70 years ago. We are so fortunate to have them with us today. So without any further ado, let's give them a nice warm welcome. So there will be no more words in the peninsula. Lord, bless this country to continue to serve the world for the freedom and justice and peace. Lord, again, let this time be true, honoring all this great man. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Yu. I have to honor your able if you could please stand and the Reading Girl Scouts lead us in the Pledge of Thank you, girl. 
sung by Ryan Norton and Antonio Ruiz Notes from the Reading Memorial High School to sing our national anthem. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the Seven million Americans served during the war. If there are any veterans in the audience today that served in any other capacity during the war, please stand now so that we can recognize you and thank you for your service. Today, 
as we remember, as we remember all those that, that did not return. If we could have a please take a moment of silence in their honor. Thank you. We are honored today to have a great friend of Reading and a great supporter of all veterans. He has been the go-to guy for me in dealing with difficult veterans issues, and he and his staff achieve results. I welcome Representative Bradley Jones. Good morning, and I appreciate those kind words, Kevin, and I appreciate the invitation to be here with you today as we honor uh, these servicemen and women uh, who served in the Korean War. And I am the very proud son of a Korean War vet who turns uh, 88 next Saturday, which was day. Uh, and he uh, often tells stories, I won't say they're fond stories, but they're strong stories of his service uh, in Korea. And uh, I'm very pleased that the uh, South Korean government is undertaking this uh, effort to recognize the service uh, and sacrifice of men and women. And I'm particularly uh, happy that, uh, or pleased at this time that there is a, a renewed effort underway to repatriate remains and identify remains, uh, which uh, is a story that actually touch, uh, touches Reddy very strongly with the Byers family. Uh, so that is a great and ongoing effort uh, that I think recognizes that uh, those that have fallen on the battlefield, um, the United States government, the United States military, is committed to identifying and repatriating all those remains, and it is an ongoing effort, uh, and is one that we should take great pride in and should always remember uh, as we go forward. Um, you know, my dad talks about his service there, uh, and it was a difficult time, and sometimes it's called a forgotten war, uh, and it is uh, truly uh, a terrific opportunity for me to be here, uh, but a most appreciated opportunity uh, to be here to recognize uh, these servicemen uh, and women uh, and the sacrifice they put forth, and the fact that so many didn't come home. Uh, and it not only is a sacrifice for those men and women that went, it's a sacrifice for the families that sent them, uh, and not knowing. Uh, and we need to recognize their service, but recognize each and every day that men and women wear the uniform in the United States, uh, making us safe and keeping us safe, uh, in far off lands, and obviously in the continent of the United States, uh, and at any given point in time, are willing to lay down their life and make the ultimate sacrifice to preserve our freedom, our democracy, and our way of life. So it really is a privilege for me to be here today. I want to thank you all for coming out on uh, what is our first day of fall. Um, and I think this is uh, a wonderful way uh, to start the fall season. And thank you, men and women, for their service and sacrifice on behalf of our country uh, and to the country so clear. And I thank the Council General for being here today and Secretary Urena for the great job that he does traveling the state and recognizing and honoring our veterans. Uh, and we're thrilled to be able to say a few words here today. And thanks again. today to have with us a Marine who served as a tank commander during Operation Iraqi Freedom, Freedom a recipient of the Purple Heart, <coughs> former Lawrence Director of Veterans Services and Boston Commissioner of Veterans Services. He now serves as the Massachusetts Secretary of Veterans Services. And I look forward to his daily tweets as he, tra as he travels our state supporting veterans and their families. He's been an amazing supporter and resource to me since I started this position. Welcome and thank you for being here, Secretary Francisco Ure. Kevin, thank you for that warm introduction and good morning to each and every one of you. But good morning and welcome and thank you to our Korean War veterans, our surviving families that are here, and more importantly, supporters here in the town of Reading. A very proud town that today shares the very best of what town has to offer, celebrating the service, recognizing those who have served, and to us veterans, those who have come before us. Thank you. To Council General Yong Yong Kim, thank you for not only your friendship, but your leadership in ensuring that your country continues to recognize the sacrifice of those 
for some 65, others 68 years ago. Donned the uniform, boarded planes, boarded ships, served honorably, fortunate to return home. You know, yesterday we had the opportunity to recognize prisoner of war missing in action day. A day that we recognize the meaning of that black flag that flies in municipal buildings, state court offices, some even private homes across our country. A day that we also, an additional day to recognize the thousands of men, women, who also donned that uniform. 190 of them from Korea alone, your peers, have yet to return home. One of the most exciting things about the peace talks this summer was the ability that 55 of those remains will be transferred to laboratory in Hawaii, where they would be identified. Just as much as the Bars family had their loved one identified several years ago, we're very hopeful that part of those 55 remains, that some of those might be Massachusetts sons coming home. On behalf of our Governor Charlie Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Massachusetts has 365,000 veterans residing among our Commonwealth. Very strong Commonwealth, great opportunities, very proud of the ability to recognize their service. And in cities and towns across this Commonwealth, we have veteran service officers. Veteran service officers like Kevin Bogiller, fellow veterans whose role is to care for other veterans and their families. And ceremonies like these today, led by offices like that of Kevin's, we're so very proud because of that work that is not just the aspect of a pat in the back and thank you very much, but it's an opportunity to also recognize. You know, one of the very uh, special events that I see today is the aspect of our youth, both young school children, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, who today set an aspect of witnessing and being in the company of Korean War veterans. You know, sadly, the 365,000 veterans that we have, half of those are Korean age era and older, meaning that in another 20 years, our population is diminishing. And it is days like today that we have the ability to integrate these two communities, those who have served, those who have not served, our 7% who have worn the uniform, to be able to make that connection of bridging the civilian and military divide. But once again, today is about these men and women, these families who are here, who have survived, who are receiving recognition from a great partner, which is the South Korean government, a partner that continues to say that their greatest <coughs> accomplishment from that war was being able to have partners like America come to their defense and their country stands on the sacrifices not only these men and women, but those who have not returned home, and those that did not return home. Earlier this summer, we had a tremendous celebration. Minister of Veterans and Foreign Affairs, Minister P, the counterpart to our VA Secretary, if you will, was here in Boston, recognizing about 80 Korean War veterans and their families. And she vowed there, then, to continue these, these celebrations and recognitions, and I'm so very glad Council General, that she has kept the word and that your government has continued to be a partner, not only in the economic development of your country and our country, but also the ability to recognize the sacrifices of 68 years ago. May God bless you, our veterans, those that are in the audience, the families, and this great town of Reading for setting the example of what it is to recognize and honor our veterans and what it is to be part great American tradition as we celebrate today. May God bless each and every one of you all. Thank you. Now finally, someone who has made all of this possible, all the way from the Republic of Korea to the Park Middle School in Reading, Massachusetts. A career diplomat, he brings 30 years Diplomatic expertise and experience to his office. 
His duties include protecting the interests of the Republic of Korea and overseas Koreans in the New England area, and furthering the commercial, economic, cultural, and scientific relations between the Republic of Korea and the United States. We are honored to have Mr. Yong Hyun Kim, Consul General of the Republic of Korea, with us today. Thank you so much for joining us.
East Meadows through those AD veterans and families. So that uh, very eloquently tells us that uh, Korea, the Korean people, remembers what you've done for us, and uh, that your service will remember forever. I'm, I'm sure that uh, the, uh, this uh, your service uh, force is uh, not only the bedrock of the alliance, but it also is, is, it, it serves as a bridging, uh, connecting peoples between our two great uh, nations. And I would like to uh, mention that, uh, as you know, that uh, now a historic, uh, historic changes are taking place in the Korean uh, Peninsula this year. As you know, that there were three inter-Korean summit meetings beginning April and including the quite recent one. And we, there was uh, one very historic summit meeting between President of the United States and the leader of North Korea in June in Singapore. That was for the first time ever in history. So I So through these summit meetings and the negotiations, we all agreed to working towards a complete denuclearization and open a new bilateral relation between the United States and North Korea and improve and develop inter-Korean relations. All these will work towards a permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula. I think that was what our veterans you fought for, you fought to defend these democracies and peace. And uh, my generation, that is our duty to complete uh, this, what you embarked upon. So taking uh, 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 this uh, great journey to our establish, establishing a permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula, I think sometimes we need to be very bold. And, uh, uh, I hope that uh, this ongoing uh, process of uh, uh, denuclearization and the peace on the Korean Peninsula uh, will be supported by your, uh, the veterans and the families and the citizens of the uh, uh, town of Reading. Together with the United States, I'm, I'm confident we can achieve that goal. And uh, I'd like to uh, ask for your support, strong support for these efforts. I wish you all your continuing good health and happiness. And God bless you and God bless our great alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Consul General Kim. And now I invite uh, Mr. Barry Berman, a member of our Reading Select Board. I also want to acknowledge my colleague Vanessa Alvarado from the select board who's here. Someone? She was still so, uh, before, before I read this, I, I, I wanted to let you know my father was a Korean War uh, veteran. Uh, and while you were protecting building democracy in South Korea, my father was in Germany trying to rebuild democracy in Germany afterwards. So, in his memory, I'm not personally. Uh, this is a certificate of appreciation. Uh, it's hereby presented to Mr. Young Young Kim, Council General of Public Korea in Boston. In appreciation for your participation in awarding the Korean Ambassador for Peace Medal to the deserving veterans of Reading who served and sacrificed during the Korean War, the town of Reading is honored with your presence as we celebrate these true American heroes. And this was given on the 22nd day of September 2018 by the Reading Select Board and was signed by all five.
And I welcome our town manager, Mr. Bob Lelesher, to make a small presentation of appreciation to the Council General. Thank you, Kevin. I especially want the young students and young kids in the room to listen to two words I'm going to say. There are two words that have not been spoken nearly enough as I turn to our veterans and their families. Council General and, and, and uh, Secretary Urena award the medals. Uh, I would like to read the Ambassador for Peace official proclamation. It is a great honor and, and pleasure to express the everlasting gratitude of the Republic of Korea and our people for the service you and your countrymen have performed in restoring and preserving our freedom and democ democracy. We cherish in our hearts the memory of your boundless sacrifices in helping reestablish our free nation. In grateful recognition of your dedicated contributions, it is our privilege to proclaim you an ambassador for peace. With every good wish of the people of the Republic of Korea, let each of us reaffirm our mutual respect and friendship that they may endure for generations to come. Signed, the Minister, Patriots, and Veterans Affairs, the Republic of Korea. So, if I have gentlemen, start on the end. Uh, we'll have, I will read the names of uh, the Consul General and Secretary Marina. We'll throw out the last one. I just, I just forgot. I thank the Korean community, uh, Korean American community here, uh, Korean community uh, church for bringing some small gift for the veterans. After I, I, I present, and I'm also very honored to uh, present a, uh, the Ambassador for Peace Medal, and also my uh, fellow Korean American uh, community uh, present a small gift for them. Thank you. Thank you for that. Presenting the, the gift from the Korean uh, Church of Nazarene is Mr. Young Jim Kwan. He's a senior member, and at the age of 14, uh, he lived through the war. And his father and his two uncles were killed during the war. And he's very, very appreciative of everything that he, everyone here did for the Korean people. Next, Charles Bevilacqua.
William Diamond. John Fairchild. John attended the Parker Middle School just a mere 82 years ago. Thomas Fox. William Grace. Gene O'Neill receiving the award, his wife, Eleanor. Albert Johnson receiving the award, his wife, Eleanor Johnson. Clark Jones. Walter Mack. George McGarity. Emory Munier, receiving the award, his daughter Patricia Lloyd. Richard Morgan, receiving the award, Joanne Morgan. Philip O'Brien receiving the award, his son, 
Philip. Thomas O'Haller. John, we know him as Jack Russell. Joseph Williamson, receiving the award, his wife, Diane Williamson. Let's give it up for our
let's please listen to their stories, remember their stories, tell our children about these stories, tell our grandchildren about these stories, so that they are never, ever forgotten. Again, thank you for coming out today. That concludes our ceremony here. But I invite you all to a reception in the school cafeteria where you can meet and thank and honor all these veterans, our heroes. So again, thank you very much. Look forward to meeting you all.